most of you know that the 2013 Lancet series on maternal and child nutrition had a fourth paper out of four that was focused on nutrition governance. And the, the, uh, this was unusual. It's, it kicked off uh, a lot of dialogue around, well, what is it that we don't know? Not about the design of policies or even implementation of program, programs for nutrition, but what do we need to understand about the process of implementing policies? The, the governance systems, the capacity, the commitment, the incentives that were just mentioned. Can we actually get an understanding of change over time? And where are the entry points to, to leverage acceleration of changing the way we do business? Because that's really what we're talking about. What do we want in a multi-sector nutrition plan or strategy? We want different sectors to collaborate better together, to share information better, to work together towards a common objective. Now, we can assume that that's going to happen if we have a plan. Not a good idea, necessarily. So what we want to try and do is explore if that's feasible. Is it possible? Is it measurable? So what I'm giving you here is part of, is really insights, not results yet, insights from ongoing research. This is not cross-sectional. This is panel in the sense of the unit of observation is different uh, offices in different sectors of governance. Now, as you know, there are all kinds of, this is just some, there are more now on their, on their way or recently implemented, of different kinds of nutrition programs, plans. And what the Nutrition Innovation Lab, it's Tufts with Johns Hopkins and NTAG and New Era and Valley Research Group and HKI and Heifer and so many partners with IOM, Patan Academy, and so on, have been repeatedly going to several sites, randomly, 21 different districts, randomly selected across the country since 2013 to try and get a, an understanding of two things. This is the POSHAN part of the study. The Innovation Lab goes beyond that, but the POSHAN study, it stands for Policy and Science for Health, Agriculture, and Nutrition. It just happens to work as an acronym. Uh, the POSHAN study has two sides to it. One is understanding change at the household and community level. And you will be hearing more of the results, uh, some of the results from that tomorrow. Several presentations are going to say, here's what we've been seeing over the last uh, couple of years uh, in districts across the whole country. Repeat panel surveys going back to the same households measuring the same children. The other half of the POSHAN study is essentially trying to understand what is happening above the level of the community, at the ward, at the VDC level, at the district level, even at the regional level, ILACA and so on. Are there things that we can identify and measure that could help us interpret what is happening on the ground in terms of nutrition? Some of it positive, some of it not necessarily positive, but is it possible even to measure nutrition governance? the policy process. So you'll hear more about the household work. This is just insights currently from uh, the policy process work. So our friends at Valley Research Group have been going back to not necessarily the same individual, but the same offices, uh, office holders, let's say. So we've got a, a, a sample from those 21 districts where we have interviewed through a semi-structured interview uh, process with a Likert scale, do you agree, disagree, neither agree nor disagree, to a series of 30 plus questions that try to capture the elements that were just laid out as challenges, commitment, motivation, understanding, willingness to collaborate and do things differently across all these different sectors of activity and at these different layers of, of geography. So for each one of the 21 districts. Now, we need to understand, is there influence? How, how is influence, how is information flowing? What are the incentives and disincentives for uh, doing business differently? And I'm going to just throw out uh, a bunch of, of numbers that are beginning to show some significance, some change. Now, this is from round one. Where you see round one, it was right after, right at the beginning of rollout of MSMP. And in most cases, what I'm gonna do is highlight 
that two of our 21 sites, Joomla and Nawal Parasi, were two of those original six pilot MSMP sites. So in a few cases, I'm comparing what happened in MSMP sites versus the other sites, just to see if there's any difference, right? So this is from 2013. And a few interesting things, you know, at that baseline. Uh, as you can see from the N, there were over 700 interviews here. This isn't just a small sample. This isn't a few dozen. 700 interviews across all those different locations. Um, what we see, the yellow are the significant differences between MSMP sites and other sites, essentially at baseline. Uh, do colleagues feel sufficiently consulted across the different sectors on nutrition? Big difference already at the, at the baseline. This is, of course, MSMP already at this point had already done some awareness raising, advocacy, training, and so on. Um, discussion of nutrition among own colleagues in your own sectors, already higher. Um, in the MSMP sites, do they f do people respondents feel that their own colleagues are adequately trained to carry out their own role? This is across all sectors, but their own role in relation to nutrition, higher yes at uh, in the MSMP sites, um, but non-significant differences in whether or not people had had themselves nutrition training, or that they felt colleagues in other sectors that they had to collaborate were, with were adequately trained. I just want to highlight this one for MNSNP sites. Um, do, we feel, do respondents feel that their own colleagues are adequately trained to achieve the results they're supposed to achieve? 2013. Now, if we skip to 2014 and 15, so there are two rounds here, round, four, round two in 2014, round three in 2015. And that same question, do you feel your colleagues in your own sector are adequately trained, has been declining. Now, one might think it should go the other way. I think it's, this, is, this is a consistent pattern that we're seeing. And what I think it is, it's not necessarily negative. I think it's greater understanding of just how challenging and complex it is to work in nutrition. And it's people who've had or a little or no training are saying, we need to be adequately equipped to, with the tools and understanding to be able to do our job uh, appropriately. Um, no significance in that difference, in that change. Actually, in the, all the other sites, there was a decline which was a similar decline, um, but which was significantly different. And of course, Suahara has done trainings, others have done trainings that, that play a role here. We could also pass this out with uh, other things. Um, by contrast, MNSP sites, do you frequently discuss nutrition with your colleagues? consistently rising on an ongoing basis in MSP sites, even though that's not significant, we do see a big, a big rise there. Um, have you had nutrition training? Uh, we see a, a consistent rise in both MS, MSMP and non-MSMP sites. It's more significant in non-MSMP sites. What this reflects is the rollout of MSMP, Suahara, and other activities responding to that need, responding to that demand for capacity building. We still have to look more closely at how effective that training is, how much is, reten is re retained, uh, when do they need refreshers? And because the civil service has lots of rotation, you know, one person can be trained here, they take it with them, but is the new person that replaces them at sufficiently trained as well. These are things we need to go into more detail um, over time. Uh, just to point out, do we feel sufficiently consulted? Well, that non-significant, but the, a decline um, in the MSMP sites and beyond. And again, I think that reflects the, the various uh, respondents in MSMP sites saying, yeah, we're, we're being challenged to do something. We want to do more. We need more capacity. But by the way, you need to listen to us so that you can understand what we need. Right? So this is really all about communication for improved collaboration. So what things are we seeing uh, significantly uh, changing? Um, question, this is just between round two and round three. Are your decisions on a daily basis, are you, is your decision making based on 
hard data, technical data evidence as opposed to you just think it's a good idea. A strong increase, highly significantly, uh, statistically significant. Uh, people are turning to facts. They're wanting the evidence to make evidence-based decisions. We need to keep feeding them that evidence. And it isn't just about prevalence rates of nutrition. It's about what else is happening in other sectors that tell, will help them collaborate better. Uh, a sense that in all the right stakeholders are included in discussions and decisions around nutrition seems to be growing. This is not comparing MSMP, this is across all the 21 sites. That's improving. What hasn't, where, where we see no significance here, real big changes, is do you feel your collaboration across sectors is, in, is effective? Uh, look, about 50% of people are still saying not really, right? So half glass empty, half full. Half of them believe multi-sector collaboration is, is improving and working, but we've still got to push further. We've got to go further on this. Uh, and is there adequate commitment across sectors? Yeah, it's growing, but you know, we can still do better. Persisting problems, some of those that were, were mentioned. Um, lack of financial resources, this is just means, all right? Just percentages across the three rounds. You can see the number of, of uh, instances of, of respondents sorry, the percentage of respondents saying we, we just don't have the financial resources to do the things you're asking us to do is rising. And I think that goes in, in tandem with better understanding of what really needs to be achieved. Um, colleagues in other sectors not adequately trained, that seems to be going down. So as training is increasing across the board, then there is a greater awareness, understanding that the people I have to work with in other sectors and other ministries are increasingly people I can work with. They get it, they're adequately trained. Uh, the old one, lack of information sharing across ministries, that 50%, we're still not doing well enough here. So people saying, I don't know what Ministry of Agriculture is doing, and they don't know what WASH is doing, and how can we work better together? That has to improve, as does the big one, which is the more players are involved in this space with responsibilities for multi-sector actions in nutrition, the less well-defined my responsibility and my role seems to be. I wish my responsibilities were better defined in this context. So um, if you put together a bunch of, and I'm gonna rush through here, um, uh, just questions on collaboration, multi-sector. Can we get better collaboration across sectors? Uh, we, had, we tested a series of questions about willingness and capacity to, co to collaborate, incentives, adequate supervision by the supervisor and, and responsibility. Uh, we found seven that worked through principal components analysis that worked together to help understand, try and understand collaboration. And all I'm going to say is that <coughs> more is better, more collaboration uh, more yes answers across seven uh, questions on collaboration is better. Um, and what we are seeing, this is from the round three, which was truncated because of the, uh, the earthquake. Some groups, like those involved in chambers of commerce, uh, are, seem to be uh, answering yes about collaboration a lot more than others that you might expect to be expecting to answer about collaboration, like health and agriculture. So there's still way to go. But the bottom line is that this has shifted over time. Since the first round, we're seeing more uh, yes answers uh, than uh, across these seven than we did before. Applying, uh, trying to understand that with a multi-regression model, what explains uh, that, you know, whether or not you, you have a score of seven on that, it's training. It's received training, it's change over time, uh, it's improving, and the greatest significance is at district level compared to using Ward as the ben benchmark. It's actually a lot of the action is happening at the district level. So the payoff seems to be measurable at that level. So the conclusions here, um, I think it is possible to measure uh, governance in different ways. We're still testing, we're still validating, we're still uh, trying to figure out how that works. From what we've got so far, it, it suggests that it's paying off, right? The, the commitment to multi-sector action and training seems to be paying off over time. Regular discussion, more motivation, less saying, fewer people saying, ah, I need an incentive, this isn't my job. And finally, 
Training matters, but not just SBCC at community level. This is all about building capacity for policymakers and implementers, not just at the household level. So when we talk about nutrition training, let's keep that in mind. There are still big hurdles, of course there are, but we can, in the rollout phase, in the next phase, we can address those. And then we've got to measure if nutrition change at the household level reflects the change we're seeing in the effectiveness of collaboration and governance. Thank you.